Welcome back to the Lights Out podcast. Bedtime stories for boys and girls for when the lights go out. Good evening, boys and girls. Are you ready for bed? Are you ready for another Lights Out bedtime story in awesome author August day number 10? Well, you're in for a treat tonight because tonight's story is called George and the Dragon by Stephen Pacey. Once upon a time, the hideous creature crawled out of the lake, the big lake, where the people of the town went to draw their water. But when it lay down on the bank of the lake, nobody dared to go there any more. Its broad tail completely encircled the water. Its scaly green body sank into the mud of the bank, and its leathery wings flapped to keep off the heat of the sun. Its eyelids drooped, and beneath them, green eyes glittered. It was the wickedest and most foul dragon anyone had ever seen. The people shut the gates of the town, they locked their doors, and they barred their windows. But they felt no safer. The dragon was bigger than the church, bigger than the king's palace. If it was to come looking for food, there was nothing they could do to keep it out. That night, they heard it leave the lake and drag itself through the sucking mud. Squawk, 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 went its feet. Skrr, skrr, went its scaly tail, dragging along the road. Fire roared from its nostrils as it burned down the town gates. It looked in at all the windows. The women screamed, the children cried, the men hid. And in the palace, the princess Sabra prayed. The dragon went on looking among the houses, its empty stomach rumbling like thunder. It's hungry, cried the people. It's looking for food. And they trembled in their beds. Rrrr, went the dragon as he came thundering down the street, crushing those fleeing in terror from their homes. The dragon continued its heavy, thudding step, looking to either side of him. It was as if he was searching for something. Then... It turned, and with its huge gush of fire from its nose, it set light to a whole row of houses. In the morning, as smoke drifted across the sky, the great creature was back beside the lake. We must give the beast what it wants, whatever it is, said the king. So he sent for Balthazar, the wisest man in the kingdom, and asked him, what the dragon was looking for. It seeks the purest and most beautiful young woman in the city, said Balthazar. It wishes to eat her. The king's face grew dark and sad. His own daughter, the princess Sabra, was, without doubt, the purest and most beautiful young woman in the whole kingdom. Everybody said so. I won't give her up to the dragon, said the king. I can't. But that night, the dragon came back to the city, looking for the purest and most beautiful young woman. And when it could not find her, it set fire to another row of houses. The city will be destroyed if you don't give the dragon what it wants, cried all the people. And eventually, the king had to agree. The beautiful Princess Sabra was taken out through the ruined gates of the city and then tied to a wooden post just beyond. The dragon raised its head off its green, scaly paws and dragged its body out of the mud. It spread its wings and half ran, half flew towards the princess. Just then, a knight stopped his horse beside the lake to let it drink. His name was George, the bravest man in all the kingdom. Glancing towards the town, he saw the dragon hovering over the princess, its wings casting a great shadow over her. Its neck was arched, its great mouth gaped open. The heat of its terrible breath had shard the hem of her white dress, 
and the ends of her golden hair. The knight mounted his horse and galloped towards the dragon. Stop! he shouted. I am George, the bravest knight in the kingdom. You shall not devour the lady until you have fought me. The dragon turned, green and raging like a great winged crocodile. Its fire scorched the saddlecloth of George's horse. But the knight raised his shield, and the flames turned back off it onto the dragon. Then George lowered the visor on his helmet and rode down on the, to the beast. He lanced level, his shield held across his chest. But the dragon bit right through the lance and spat it out. Its claws lashed at George and pulled him off the saddle. His helmet and cloak were lost. Then George raised his battle axe. With both hands he swung it round and round his head and struck a blow where he thought the dragon's heart must be. But the dragon had no heart, and the axe shattered into a dozen pieces. The great green tail knocked George off his feet. Then he drew out his long sword, and with both hands he swung it around and around his head, ran it in under the dragon's green and scaly chest, and plunged the sword between two scales. The ground shook as the dragon roared and yowled and rolled over on its back, crawling at the air. Stepping bravely forward, George raised his broadsword and with all his strength brought it down on the dragon's head. When the people saw that the dragon was dead, they waved and clapped and cheered, and George freed the princess Sabra from the wooden post, and hand in hand they went to see the king. State your reward, said the king, hugging and kissing his daughter. You shall have any reward, you name it. So George named as his reward the most beautiful young bride in the whole kingdom, the Princess Sabra. The End